Hi everybody, all my followers. Uh, welcome to another video. Uh, the video today is on a 2007 Lexus uh, IS220D. So I presume is the 2 liter diesel. Um, and this car came to me because it doesn't start. Um, and I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, so it cranks fine, but it does not start. Uh, oh, the car, uh, someone has been obviously already working on the car, there's some parts here. I haven't opened the bonnet yet. Um, I will be doing that, um, a visual inspection, obviously. Uh, but the first thing um, I wanted to show you is that uh, there is no codes on this ECU, as you can see in there. Passes with no faults. Okay. Okay, so there's no point to go in there, but you've seen it was no code. So whichever fault we have in here is not triggering any fault. So the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm not going to, uh, well, I will show you about while I'm doing it, I'm going to save you that time. I'm going to load some live data because I want to look at some things to try to figure out why the car is not, uh, is not starting, obviously. Okay, and I have some live data loaded. And this is the bits I'm interested on for now. Let me place the maxi seats in a different place. Perhaps in here. Okay, so this is the live data I'm interested on, as you can imagine, uh, being a diesel. So I want to see my target common rail pressure, which is tell me it needs uh, 29,500 kilopascals, which is about 300 bars. Um, and then... Uh, Engine speed, I want to see my engine speed, obviously. This fuel pressure, if I'm not mistaken, is the fuel pressure from the fuel pump in the tank. You can see someone has been taking the seat out. That was not me. Um, so, but I believe that's the pressure and seven uh, kilopascals uh, is about seven bars, if I'm not mistaken. So it should be about right. Then I have my injection uh, feedback values. Uh, Corrections, not so interested for here for now. The first things I want to see is these here. And I'm going to crank. It's the first time I'm going to crank looking at this live data. So we're going to all be able to see uh, exactly um, what's going to come up with. So let's going to crank the engine and see what happens. Okay, I believe you can see that easily. Okay, you have seen that. With me, I believe we had uh, engine pressure absolutely fine. Um, we had I, I I I thought at the beginning this differential pressure sensor would be something to do with the fuel, but I don't. It might not be. But what you have seen, guys, is I had no common rail pressure sensor. Uh, sorry, I had no common rail pressure at all. Let's gonna crank the engine again, so you can see it. Let's gonna crank it again. Is now is asking me for. 500 bars, I'm not really sure why, but let's gonna crank again and you're gonna see that I have our RPMs. Look at that. So I have RPMs, but no pressure whatsoever. Whatsoever, it doesn't even move. Uh, so we have either, well, we don't have nothing yet. Let's go and open the bonnet first and try to see if there's anything obvious first. Okay, and uh, checking this, uh, we have our common rail in here. We have a kind of a valve in there, which I believe this is just a release valve. Um, I don't think this controls the pressure inside the common rail. I believe that is controlled by this valve here at the back. This, this I believe, is just like a bypass. Um, and uh, this obviously is my fuel pump. And I do have my pressure sensor right here at the back. And this is one of those six wires pressure sensors. I never worked on one of these, but I've heard about it. And I'm gonna have to try to see if I can measure something or uh, how I'm gonna do this. Um, mm. I mean, visually, guys, everything looks fine. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna measure probably the wires from here 
to the I don't think that comes to this module here I believe that might comes to the driver injector perhaps because it's controlled by or maybe not because I don't have the wire collars here so it might be that actually this is just for the injection system okay it looks like that is just the injection so my sensor will my cam to here to this module here the first thing I'm going to do probably is make sure wires are good measure everything from this sensor all the way to here um, and then possibly try to uh, measure the sensor itself see if um, see if the sensor is working uh, yeah I think that's what uh, that's what we're gonna do guys okay, so the first thing I've done was measure the resistance of the dump valve so I said uh, this valve should not um, should only release uh, is a, a bypass valve this valve apparently um, according to what I have found on Tech Doc Lexus um, is a dump valve that um, operates under deceleration when you turn the engine off it's supposed to open and stuff like that so the first thing I've done guys was make sure the valve was okay and I should have somewhere a maximum of about uh, 1.1 ohms on this valve depending on the temperature um, and it's, it's about right I got about the right um, resistance um, then I'm measuring the wires from the dump valve to my EDU or to my driver injector module which is these two wires here on this first plug in there okay the pink and the black wire uh, measure both I can show you there I'm measuring the pink I think okay so I have 0 0.3 ohms on one wire and I have 0 0.1 on the other so that's absolutely fine to there and now we're gonna do the next check and my next check is checking the PRD signal which I believe it stands for pressure rail discharge signal which is sent from here to my ECM um, um, tech doc will tell you the pins and uh, I have 0 0.3 ohms so this wire is good um, there is a signal we can check uh, at a later stage uh, with the scope but for now I'm just checking wiring and this wire is also good and the next thing I'm checking is the power supply to this uh, unit and I do have 11.63 volts in there which is battery voltage at the moment so my power supply is good at this point guys I would say that uh, oh, wind. Um, so at this point I would say we have a problem well we could well have a problem with our um, module in there the problem is the module is setting no codes if it was a problem with my discharge valve most likely I would have a code for it um, and because uh, my actually um, pressure regulator pressure valve at uh, the end of the common rail the one with the six wires it doesn't go to that module in there um, I believe I haven't checked the diagrams that far but I believe it, go it goes to the other module um, and I think that's where my problem might, might, might be so I've done these checks just to, to, to check the the discharge valve check power supplies in there make sure wires were good because that component is also part of the common rail the discharge valve so um, so I had to check that anyway so we checked that now we're gonna check the next stuff which I will take you also through okay uh, I'm not really sure where I've stopped uh, on the last clip but uh, my next step is gonna be checking my wiring from my sensor here all the way back to the ECU and uh, this now this is my accelerator pedal fuel pressure sensor component E65 here it is my pinouts okay and a good stuff with these wiring diagrams is actually tells you what uh, or what each wire does what anyway we have from my pressure sensor pins one to six they come on my 
plug in here, plug B, wire, this one is wire 114, uh, then wire 68, 66, 68, 67, 91, 69. So we're gonna measure the wires, make sure everything is good. And if it is, then we're gonna have to measure the sensor. Or the supply to the sensor, I would say first. Okay, so I've measured um, every single wire from my uh, sensor to my ECU. Um, every single wire is good. Um, they are all below like 0 0.5 ohms. They are all measuring like 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So everything is good in there. Now, uh, guys, I'm not really sure where I've stopped uh, on the last clip. But... Um, so after all these measurements, um, what I want to see is if my ECU is reading some inputs on that from that sensor. And to do that, guys, all I've done was um, I've unplugged the the sensor, and my pressure goes all the way up to that, which is obviously way too high. It's just because it's not getting any readings. Uh, now I'm going to leave it here, and I'm going to plug it in, and you can see exactly what happens. Okay, and I'm sure you saw the reading come all the way down to there, okay? But uh, still, uh, when I crank the engine, uh, let's gonna go back, just here, trouble code, let's gonna delete these codes now. <laughs> No fault codes. It's going to go back to live data. Okay, and as I come down to my fuel... Uh, nope, it's down. Fuel pressure. There is the one. So that's the one that's gonna put on the top. So the 70, when I crank the engine, still nothing changes. <sighs> so, uh, do we have a bad sensor? Or we have no fuel in there whatsoever for that, the, the pump has no fuel in there. Uh, or may have, we can have many issues at the moment guys so I think uh, the next step for me is gonna make sure I have fuel coming from the tank and make sure that I have fuel um, uh, the front um, I hope I do have and providing I do have then we might actually have a bad sensor maybe don't know yet and guys I really need to show you this so obviously someone has been here. I've just lifted the the cushion and this is how everything is. But look at this plug. Look at that. And look at these wires. Look at that. They are all look at that. All pierced, all damaged. Look at those wires. Why people does these guys? Why? If th <laughs> seriously. Damn it. Okay, so I think... Um, okay, we had load. Um, we had some load, so obviously this is, oh, this is lifted. Look, they, they've been here. Well, obviously they have, but... Damn it. I hate to start jobs when someone has been messing about and God knows what they did. But, um, but yeah, we have no option at the moment, so let's gonna try to figure it out exactly what is wrong uh, okay okay guys and what we're gonna do now uh, the wires are absolutely destroyed look at that look but still uh, we're gonna well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see so my voltage my pump is gonna be probably these thick wires at the back and uh, what I'm gonna do 
is with my test lamp and with the maxisys that is right here we're gonna I'm gonna activate the relay and see if I do have 12 volts getting back here so let's gonna go here activate okay all data it's gonna activate and I do have okay and after getting my face completely splashed with fuel uh, we did some progress um, Unfortunately, I was not expecting I'm gonna have to clean all this because I was not really expecting this um, Anyway, uh, the pump is work. I took this off open into bits the pump is working the, the motor is working and it's pumping. Okay, so um, Now I put a hose that hose in there is connected to the to the pipe uh, in the engine that should be taking fuel uh, to the high-pressure pump when I blow in those in that hose in there I have hair coming out on these hose here okay now the thing is this hose goes straight into a filter it doesn't come from the pump so this should be feeding into there this is my return and these two little hoses here this is the one where the uh, pressure comes so when I turn the pump in there which I did with those two wires in there which they are connected to uh, um, another battery uh, if I put voltage in there, um, the pressure comes through here. Now, if the pressure comes through here, and this is the one that should be taking the fuel, I'm a little bit confused at the moment. So I don't know where this one connects. And that's my problem now. I don't know if this goes underneath to some sort of one-way valve or something like that. I just know if I connect that, um, I have no fuel coming on anything. Uh, so I'm a little bit confused. I'm gonna have to try to figure out what's how the system works and then and obviously once I know how the system works uh, Hopefully it will be easier to repair Stop 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 stop. I'm gonna get killed on this video, right? What I've done wrong everything everything so oh dear I'm gonna Probably what you are going to see until here have been um, edit, edited and I've cut loads of stuff. I'm going to have to because uh, I want to save you from suffering watching me doing so many things wrong. Right, let's going to stop here um, and get our brains to work or get my brain to work because probably you on that side already criticizing and uh, and already realize everything I'm doing wrong here okay the first thing I've done wrong guys the first thing I've done wrong was um, pre-assuming <coughs> excuse me was pre-assuming that uh, my problem was a fuel pressure control uh, system no sorry it was a, a problem on the fuel control system fuel pressure control system uh, without even uh, check if I actually add fuel in there um which we already established that there isn't so i was kind of barking in the wrong tree a uh, little bit in there um and um and then another thing that i've done wrong is that uh, even though there is a fuel pump in the tank on this car was not only until i actually went and checked a little bit better uh, this is a denso uh, system and um uh, uh, where I was, I got in interrupted. Um, so, so yeah, so this is the Denso system. And this system, guys, it works by section. So, although the fuel pump that is in the tank, uh, it does work uh, to uh, circulate the fuel in the tank. Um, and, um, and, um, and pretty much is what it does. Uh, it does that and uh, it pushes the fuel uh, through the filter Okay, so that's pretty much what what it does um, This is a section system and that's what we're gonna do next so I'm got well I've done it already I've uh, established I've checked uh, which are the <clears throat> the pins on uh, multiplex of this U that controls the solenoid uh, Actually, let me show you Okay, so my suction valve is right here at the back, look, right here at the back. This down here 
is my fuel pressure sensor. Oh, sorry, my fuel sensor, temperature sensor. And right here at the back is my uh, SVC, suction control valve. Uh, this valve controls obviously the pressure in, in the rail and at the same time it obviously controls the, um, the vacuum that is made into the system to pull the fuel all the way up to here. Um, and that valve is controlled by these two wires here, this green and this uh, green with a black strip. Um, I have this off, if I put 12 volts here I can easily hear the valve working. Um, so that's fine. So my next uh, step um, is going to be to see if my ECU is actually controlling the valve. So I'm going to put the scope on here, uh, crank the engine and see if we have um, a signal coming out. Okay, so I have this connected to my uh, valve. I had to do it like this because I have nobody here to crank the engine. So I'm going to have to do it on my own. It comes through here, through there. There is the scope. Now, the scope, I don't think it's set correctly. Uh, well, 5 volts is fine, but 100 milliseconds is probably too much. Let's go to 500 milliseconds. That should be about right. Okay, clutch in. It's going to press this start button. And see if I have, and I do, let me, it's still too much. Oh, sorry, should go the other way. Ten milliseconds. There we go. And it's not going to start, obviously. But we have seen that we do have a good, uh, a good uh, uh, signal, a uh, good pulse. Um, let me just do one thing here. Sorry about that guys. Okay, so my voltage is dropping because the battery is getting flat now. Uh, that's why we are now really reaching the 12 volts in there. We have 5 volts in there. Then we have, I don't know, nearly 10 volts. But, but you have seen at the start that we had a perfect uh, uh, signal. I might allow the battery to charge a little bit again. Um, and then try this again. But I don't really think I need to do that because I do have pulse, so my ECU is controlling my SVC uh, valve, so <sighs> my next step is going to be probably uh, prime the system. Let's going to prime the system and see what happens from there because, um, well, unless we have a leak somewhere that is allowing the fuel to return to the tank, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, let's going to try to prime the system and see what happens. Hey guys, so, and I believe I found my issue, um, I'm going to show you how I got to it. Uh, now, as I've said earlier, this is a, um, it's a suction system, it's a, it's a vacuum system, so the fuel pump creates vacuum on the fuel line and that pulls the fuel to the pump. Um, as you can imagine, if you do have a leak, I should have mentioned this before, if you do have a leak on the, on the hose, on the system, um, one, even if the, the pump managed to pull the fuel back to the pump, um, when the car is left uh, for some time, the fuel will return back to the pump, back to the tank. And when you try to crank the engine, you will have to pull the fuel all the way back to there. That's if the pump managed to do that. If you do have a leak that is allowing air into the system, then obviously that that's not going to work because the pump is going to pull hair rather than pull the fuel. Now, what I've done to um, try to figure out what was wrong, or actually, I was trying to force fuel into the into the pump to see if I could start the engine. Then, 
And what I've done, guys, was that. So I've bypassed the output uh, of that uh, pump in there. And I put it straight into the fuel line that goes into the engine. And when I force the pump to run, I'm going to show you this. Okay, so uh, you might be able to see straight away now, but uh, let me put that somewhere here. And now somewhere there. And I want you to look to that hose. I'm going to bypass the relay here and force the pump to run. Look at that. There's a leak. The hose, there's a split on that hose in there. So we're going to have to cut this hose a little bit and put it back. So I have fuel here now, obviously, because I've been forcing it to come to here. Should have a rag in here. Believe me or not, I've run out paper towel. <laughs> let's get some more. Anyway, let's gonna cut this hose. So this hose is gone in there, and on both sides actually. Let's gonna cut it and put it back on. Okay. Okay, so let's gonna cut it straight after. Somewhere here, I think it is. Okay, it's gonna still enough holes. It's gonna put it back. Put this a little bit backwards. Okay. It's gonna force this pump to run again. I wanna see. Do still have any leaks around here? Okay, the pump is running. It's forcing the fuel now. Yes, it is. Okay, I have no leaks here. I had to stop because I have a leak at the back. There was no leaks down here at the front, so I'm quite confident that this is gonna work now. Okay, the leak at the back has been repaired, and basically what happened was the fuel was coming out in the wrong place. I have a little bit of a mess at the back. I'm gonna have to clean all that. Uh, the pipes are now back where they should be. Uh, I believe my fuel line is gonna be kind of full now, hopefully. So I'm gonna attempt to start the engine now um, and see what happens. So let's gonna cycle this ignition. Come on. There we go. There we go, there we go, come on, come on. Don't go off. There we go. It's running very, very lumpy for some reason. Whoops. Low and low. Wow, that's. I was not expecting that low level, that oil level. Let's gonna check the engine level first, the oil. Might be just a sensor problem, so let's gonna have a look. But, engine is running. Okay, that was a little bit scary, but um, I've checked and there is oil, uh, there is oil uh, in the engine, definitely. Uh, so it might just be a sensor problem somewhere, I don't know. Uh, that, that's not what I've been asked to look at. So let's gonna try to start this engine again. See what happens. Then it pretty much ran right away. There is a misfiring. There is. Oh, it's running really, really bad. Wow. It 
is running really bad. But it's running. Yeah, it's running really, really bad. I think uh, we're better to stop this. And uh, there is a lot of that uh, orange uh, sealant um, around covers and between the the head and so something has been done on this car as well um, I'm not sure what they did but um, but we're gonna play the maxi seats just in case just have a quick look and see what's in there um, and have a look at some live data see if we can figure out why it's wrong but uh, the primary job is done engine is running engine started so um, I think that uh, that's it for this video guys um, a lesson here that I need to uh, I need to point it out um, if some of uh, some of you have not already uh, in the comments yes I've started the wrong in the wrong place um, I should have checked if was fuel in there in first place um, 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 I would say I should have known that the fuel pump in the tank uh, is there for another purpose perhaps um, I think it was the first time I've worked on these systems really so uh, but yeah but now I do know that uh, the um, um, we do know we all do know now how this system actually works and hopefully that um, that is also a lesson to some of you out there guys um, some information that can help you out in the future and let's kind of wrap this up because um, I don't know how this video is going to be um, in the end uh, but uh, but yeah, we fixed it, guys. Was a um, um, was a leak in the hose, a simple leak in the hose. Um, well, it is, guys. Um, hope there's some information here. You guys find it useful. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you do have any questions, any comments, uh, please, guys, put them below. Uh, and like always, thank you for watching.